This is Edge Brush Gull Wing. It has a very low body height, like a Carolingian. The body height is actually, the letters are actually wider than they are tall. And then very tall ascenders and descenders. Now those ascenders and descenders catch a lot of air, kind of like the puff of, the, of a sail. I'm convinced they're because I've been living at the beach where there's wide open spaces and the waves and the sail and the wing of the gull. So here's edge brush gull wing. It's very important that you watch the manipulation on those ascenders because they're tricky and it's better than just looking at the exemplar. Now here we go with the straight uh, stem stroke letters and watch me palette the brush on a business card to get the very edge of the tool sharp as it can be. And these are, as you see, only one and a half brush widths tall. So there's an I and an R and an R variation with the uh, wing pulled out stroke. And U, notice the left hand side of the U is a little bit rounder than the right hand side, which is going to be a little straighter. And here I'm borrowing from uh, Anshali U with a first stroke that's like a bowl stroke and the second stem is straight. Now any of these branch strokes, I'm building in several strokes because I'm demonstrating going slowly, but you can also lighten your pressure and push up from the baseline. <clears throat> And then remember to come out with a very thin hairline. There's regular N and pulled out N. And here's regular N. Notice the exit stroke is about the same as the entrance stroke at a flat edge angle. And here's M whose final arcade is pulled out like the wing of a gull. Now I'm going to do the oval strokes. The O will really show how wide these letters are, being four brush widths wide and one and a half brush widths tall. O, C, a lowercase type E, and here's more of a majuscule E if you're thinking in terms of unchal. And it doesn't matter whether you do the top stroke second or the middle stroke second. And there's an A, borrowing heavily from Unchel. And a G with the same bowl as the A. And when I come down to the descender, I'm swooping down and just like letting it take off into the air. Even the jots on the I should be sort of windy and um, taper off. I'm tapering it off by angling up to the right. And here's a P and a Q, also descending strokes. And you'll want to have even more space between the lines than on this demo sheet because these ascenders and descenders need a lot of room to elongate and um, hold their air. Now the ascenders are, you know, quite a bit larger and taller than the uh, body height. Although I won't prescribe a certain height, like a number of pen widths, just make them as tall as you have room to make them. And this is where some pretty tricky manipulation comes in, especially on those letters that have branching, like an H, like a K. Because I want the stroke to thicken in the middle and narrow as it gets toward the base line. So you see I have this sort of aerodynamic shape that starts thin, gets thick, and then slims down again. Uh, L, you just pretty much want to come straight through, like I just did with that D stem stroke. Unless you're doing an uncial style D, which comes across with a horizontal stroke in this way. So you see I press a little bit to get the thickness and then release again at the bottom. Now that's going to be an F. I'm still going to do it a little bit with this F that becomes a descender and has a descender too. But there's again that aerodynamic shape 
that gull, that wing shape. Same thing with B, with the B bowl. And now I'm going to do an alternative kind of G that has a small bowl and then quite a lot of flourishing as it comes down a long S curve. And these descenders can be just as long as you have room for them to go. S is fairly simple. It's like an uncial S fitting into the body height. You can also do sort of a sail-like elongated S. That T has a little bit of height to it, and here's a regular T. And a third kind of T would be borrowing, as we often do in this alphabet, from uncial. A little more casual, though. Script style S. X, take advantage of swooping through with the second stroke. Z, also quite short, and you can pull out the bottom horizontal. Here are some caps, and I'm not doing all the caps, but I'm doing the principal movement, movement groups. You can see they're also very much wider than they are tall, and they catch a lot of air, so they all look a bit puffed. O, C, a script kind of G, E borrowing from Unchel. Q with a very pulled out tail. All of these are just variations on a basic flourish cap with a gull wing design feel to them. With the D and the B, you'll see some branching that I like to do with regular flourish caps as well. And I'm even branching on the F. P, very minimal serifs, very little minimal foot or finishing strokes. So these things really would just take off sailing if they were on the water. You would never use these caps all together. You would only want to use them as lead caps for um, a text done in gull wing. The I and the J with their reverse curve. Notice that push stroke is just made in a flash of a second. Now this clip will show you a little bit about design, designing gull wing, especially if you're using upper and lower case. There's a large G and U-L-L means two letters. I want to just put the flourish on one of those letters, not both of those letters. And cross through. And here's a W variation where I have a condensed collapsed counter and a wide open counter. And an I, and because it's a short word, I'm going to pull out the N just to emphasize the gull wing or to illustrate it, and then really have fun swoop through with the G. If you have room, you pull it out. This quote will have a lead cap of an O. It is only one line of my favorite roomy quote. And um, the lines will be very far apart because I know I will have to have room for descending strokes like that long P. And because there's very few words per line, I can pull out strokes like that pulled out N. Now on the H, you can see that classic swelled in the middle stroke, releasing pressure toward the baseline. So my hairline shows. And th those two words are the only words on that line. I'm writing without guidelines, so I'm just trying to determine the amount of space that I have so that letters don't run into each other too much. 
But if the letters are this open and airy, they can overlap, and it isn't the end of the world. There are those W's that have the second round bowl in window. Pulling out the stroke at the end of the word. But notice in the, I pulled out the stroke in the middle of the word. Like I said, if you have room, pull it out. The second line of this quote is, and let the spirits fly in and out, in case you're looking it up. Tall T. There aren't any other ascenders around to conflict with it, so I decided to give it a little more decorative tall, tall look. You can see it's very subtle between the pulled out R and the pulled out N, so you need to head that N a little bit down toward the baseline to make sure it doesn't look like an R. There's a nice play of pulled out strokes in this design. There aren't two pulled out strokes, one on top of the other, or two in a row, or anything that would be um, probably not well advised. And nothing's quite running into each other, but we, we could even put more space between the lines. There's a really pulled out S. And a flourish on the T crossbar. Open the window in the center of your chest. A quote by Rumi in Gullwing. Mm -hmm.